Joseph of the Cross on the feast of the Assumption of the Blessed Lady in the year 1654. St. John Joseph was a man who sacrificed himself to God in a life of rigorous penance and contempt for all earthly comforts. Even as a boy, he practiced extraordinary virtue and self-denial. At the age of 16, he proved to be the first Italian to ever to enter the reform movement of the great St. Peter of Alcantara, a convent which had been established in Naples. In his novitiate, St. John Joseph exercised himself in the great virtues of humility and poverty. According to the example of their Holy Father, St. Francis, and strove to nourish the spirit of mortification and prayer in imitation of St. Peter of Alcantara. John Joseph attained such a high degree of perfection that even before he was ordained a priest, he was commissioned with the building of a new convent. Wherever there was hard work to perform during this great construction, he was the first to be there. He worked as the hod carrier, now as the mason. The building itself was arranged to the strictest poverty. And like St. Francis, John Joseph preferred not to become a priest, but obedience compelled him to receive the holy orders. Because he gave evidence of great theological knowledge and experience in the ways of the path of spiritual life, he was entrusted with the direction of the novices, into whose youthful heart he was able to instill so admirable a religious spirit that several of his novices became distinguished for their sanctity. Several times, Father Joseph was obliged to accept the office of guardian. When the convents in Italy were no longer dependent on the Spanish houses, but were formed into a separate province, he was appointed a provincial prov province, a region of Franciscan houses. He was appointed a provincial in spite of all the objections he raised. Just as every good work meets with many obstacles in the beginning, so it happened in this new province. When his term of office expired, John Joseph lived a simple life as a subject in the convent in Naples, where he devoted much time to the care of souls and practices of piety. Among his devotees was Saint Francis, Mary Francis of the Five Wounds. His mortifications were extremely and exceptionally rigorous, that no one may venture to imitate him without a special grace from the Lord. He wore several iron crosses studded with sharp points on his shoulders, his back, and on his chest. Daily he scourged himself to blood. He went either barefoot or wore sandals in which small nails stood out. During, amazingly, during the last 30 years of his life, he abstained from drink of every sort in honor to give honor to the thirst of our Lord Jesus Christ on the cross. But he was still more intent on even something greater, interior mortification. In order to keep his soul recollected, he kept a strict guard over his senses. He strove constantly to deny his own will in order to do the will of his superiors and thus fulfill the will of the Lord. He emphasized this point also when giving advice to those who came for guidance. We we'll always like to give a story. We have a few great stories about this magnificent saint today. The first one, an optician, an optician named Vincent Lanez was a penitent and a great admirer of our saint today. He had a little son, five months old, who was very sick and near to death. Full of grief, Lanez 
this man came to Father Joseph and begged him to obtain the recovery of his child by his prayers. But Vincent said, Father John Joseph, God calls him to himself. God calls him to himself. No, no, said the distressed father. He must leave this child to me. Last year he took my daughter, that is enough. One for him and the other for me. Reluctantly, Father Joseph answered, you should submit to the will of the Lord. Submit to the will of the Lord, but since you will not very well, you will suffer the consequences. It says the child recovered, but then ceased to grow. It attained its third year, but gave no signs of intelligence. The unhappy father, whom Father Joseph evaded during this time, could stand it no longer, so he went to the cell of the father, cast himself contritely at his feet, and acknowledged his sin. After praying a while, the saint turned to him with sincere compassion and said, you deprived God of the honor and the child of the happiness which it would have enjoyed in heaven during all this time praising the law. So God punished you, but now he sees your sorrow and the punishment is at an end. Return to your home, arriving there, the father beheld this child in the throes of death, the final moments. The boy turned his little face towards the father with a sweet smile. Amazingly, this was the first smile of the child, the first ever to be seen. And then that moment later, the innocent soul took its flight to heaven. Beautiful story to reflect when we see these little souls after baptism who die, very sad on a natural point, but these souls are called to the Lord to give him glory and to gaze at his holy face. Secondly, a nice story about this saint today as an old man this time. Saint John Joseph was troubled with many ailments, especially with some ulcers on his legs. So he could hardly make a step without the use of a staff or a cane. One day when he was in the cathedral to venerate the blood of holy martyr Januarius, which we know is a, a miracle of a liquefied blood, which happens two or three times a year, when the vial containing the blood is placed near the head of the saint, so the cathedral was packed waiting for this miracle. Father Joseph's cane was lost in the crowd that pressed about him. He was obliged then without this staff, this support, to support himself at the, way, at the walls until he arrived at the church door. Then he paused while he asked the saint to give him back his support, to give him back his cane. It says a distinguished gentleman who had come into the church in his carriage asked Father Joseph what had happened. Raising his hand, St. John Joseph of the Cross said, my hobby horse has run away. My hobby horse has run away, but St. Januarius will bring him back. At that moment, it said the people began to cry in the church aloud. A miracle, a miracle. The cane was seen to pass through the air until it reached his hand. Later on, a cardinal asked for the favor of possessing the object of so charming a miracle. He had encased in a precious shrine. So at the age of 80 years of age, St. John Joseph of the Cross died like an innocent and beautiful child. His final glance resting on the picture of the Blessed Virgin Mary. May that be the soul for our lives. On March the 5th, 1734, he breathed his final breath. His grave at Naples is a constant object of great veneration. Many miracles still occur there. Pope Pius VI beatified him and Gregory the 16th solemnly decanonized St. John Joseph of the Cross on Trinity Sunday in the year 18. 
39. So what can we learn then briefly about this great saint? Is this great attitude and interior spiritual mortification. Spiritual mortification is important. This consists in keeping our interior affections in hand, our interior affections, in repressing our impatience, conquering, conquering anger, and breaking self-will, and yielding to our from our own self-opinion, our own opinion, in curbing our eyes in seeing, our eyes in hearing, and our tongue in speaking. This type of mortification is far more difficult than the exterior, and yet in another sense easier because everybody can practice it. But everybody must keep on practicing this if he wishes to save his soul and arrive in heaven. For the apostle says in Romans chapter 8, if you live according to the flesh, you shall die. But if by the spirit you mortify the deeds of the flesh, you shall live. So live, dear brothers and sisters in Christ, live by the spirit. Renounce the flesh. Live in Mary, the blessed mother, the immaculate and ask help of St. John Joseph of the cross today so that if the clock of your life stops ticking today, you'll be ready to enter eternity with the Lady, the Queen, the Immaculate, to adore her wondrous Son forever and ever and ever. Amen. May the holy names of Jesus and Mary and Joseph be blessed now and forever. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit.